The government's cover story for the U-2 was that it was being used for weather research. That was our cover story, yeah, reconnaissance weather squadron. If not conventional aircraft then, what did they see? The U-2 cruised at three times the height of regular airliners and would sometimes be glimpsed by civilians. Ruth, I can't be sure, but I believe I saw the sun glinting off of windows or observation portals of sort. In the mid-1950s, while both the Cold War and America's interest in UFOs were at their peak... I think it was from outer space, but friendly. ...the silver-colored plane sometimes created confusion. It was pure aluminum, and we said, hey, we look like a bright star up there. Pilots were told to deny everything, even to aircraft controllers. There are stories about seeing something flying way above they may have called it in, but they'll still get nothing other than uh, evasive stuff. If you get up along the Canadian border, the ground controller wanted to question my altitude. Actually, he was pretty accurate. And I says, no, you got to recalibrate your weapon. <laughs> That's not the altitude we're at. By 1957, unacknowledged U-2 flights were the source of half of all reported UFO sightings. But they were nothing compared to what would come. Ghost-like objects dart across the radar screen. Deceptions designed to protect Oxcart fueled the rumors about Area 51. Air Force jet fighters spend several hours chasing the objects plotted on the radar scope. We flew 2,850 missions out of Groom Lake, Area 51, that no one knew about. The plane did not exist. And naturally, the sunlight just right, it would be spotted. And it would become a genuine UFO sighting. General Sanford, Air Force Intelligence Director, confirms that the objects are not secret American weapons and reiterates the Air Force's obligation to investigate. This is during the era that the Air Force was doing Project Blue Book, investigating UFO sightings. They started investigating, and all of a sudden, they'd run up there against this wall of security. I said, whoa, that's a top secret mission. You got to make a cover story and forget it happened. We have received and analyzed between one and 2,000 reports. So Project Blue Book, the poor guys, they would have to manufacture a story to explain that sighting. With all due respect to the Air Force, I believe that some of them will prove to be of interplanetary origin. Air traffic controllers at the FAA had to be cautioned not to report something moving that fast in American airspace for fear of alarming people. The airline pilots were a big troublemaker. They would see the, the blackbird climbing. They'd be at 80,000 feet, and the airlines were at 45. And they would call down and, and say, you know, and they'd be yelling over the air. <laughs> but they'd see them. And the passengers would see them. The FBI would meet them at whatever airport they were landing at. And they'd just make them sign an inadvertent exposure that they wouldn't reveal what they had just seen. <laughs> 